Today we're gonna to be talking about public domain books and how we can use AI to actually make a, a decent income, uh, at least a side passive income using public domain books and how AI is uh, dealing with that. And I wanna show you this article. This is actually the very first article that I wrote for Kindlepreneur uh, almost two years ago. And this is the article that got me the job, in fact, and I did a lot of work into this because I've actually published a couple of public domain titles, and to this day I still make about $150 a month, and I've, you know, this is from titles I uploaded a long time ago. I haven't done any other work on it since then, and it's still continuously making me money. Um, but the problem with public domain you can't just go and grab a bunch of public domains and just throw them on to Amazon and expect it to fly with Amazon. Amazon requires you to differentiate the books in some way. And so if we go to Amazon's guidance on public domain books, they say it has to be differenti differentiated in one of three ways. We have translated, I'll zoom in a little bit here, Translated, so uh, if it's a, an original translation of a public domain work, you can do that. Or you can annotate it. And so this includes additional content like study guides, literary critiques, detailed biographies, or historical context. You can also add illustrations of 10 or more original illustrations relevant to the book. And those are the three ways that Amazon tells you that you can uh, differentiate your public domain content. This in the past has been a barrier for a lot of people because you either don't have the money to invest in all of those original images or you don't have the time to do another translation or add all of those annotations. And so while there are a lot of people putting out public domain work, uh, it tends to be you know, shoddy at best and uh, if it were easier, there'd be more people doing it. But now they're actually, it is actually easier to do because of AI. And now currently, I did check for this. Uh, Amazon does not appear to have any policies. If we look elsewhere on this page, anything related to AI, I don't think they care. The reason I don't think they care is because these guidelines here are just to avoid any potential legal issues. Um, like, for instance, if I were to upload a book that was exactly the same as somebody else's book and that book was differentiated, they could prove that I stole from that other person's book, even though the book is in the public domain. If we if they weren't differentiated and I just sort of took somebody else's book and published it, then it would be harder to prove. And you could have like messy court cases that I just copied somebody else's formatting and put it in there. Um you know, I have to do a little bit of work on my part to make my product unique. And so I think as long as your product is unique, using one of these three methods, it shouldn't matter how you get there because Amazon's really just interested in if they can be sued or not. And so how are we going to, how can I relate this back to AI? There are a couple of different methods that I believe we can do to create these public domain works and differentiate them in a way that we're able to just upload them to Amazon. The first and obvious one, I think, is the images. If we are, if we're using Midjourney uh, or another AI art generator like Stable Diffusion, uh, it's relatively easy to create images, and then we can just include those in the book. I personally like to t like to make images that are on a kind of charcoal or pencil drawing style because those lend themselves really well to black and white images which go well inside printed text. And so that's what I've done in a couple of the books I've published. Uh, and you can just do, you just need to do 10 of them. Now, I have run into trouble before with Amazon denying my book and even they actually suspended my account once because the images, according to them, were not original. The images in that particular case, this was a while ago, I had the images from someone I had purchased the images from uh, on Fiverr, and then those images were displayed on my website for a while, and then I decided to use them in the book. Even though I owned the copyright to those images and they were mine, 
the Amazon saw that they existed somewhere else. And so they judged them as not original illustrations. And I actually got into a little bit of trouble for it. And so I want you to be careful. The only reason, the only way I recommend you go this route with AI is if you have a private account with Midjourney, which is the most expensive one that they have. That way those images will not be publicly available on the web for Amazon to crawl. And you can just take them, you can download them and then upload them to your book. And then they will, that will be the first that those images any, uh, appeared anywhere. If you don't do that, you run the risk of Amazon because Amazon crawls the web all the time, discovering those images on Midjourney's website and saying, oh, these are not original, they existed here first and then getting you in trouble for that. So that is a cautionary tale to keep in mind. Uh, but another, perhaps easier now, way to go about it is to do annotations. So original annotations, there's a bunch of different things that you can do here. You don't have to be a scholar. Uh, in fact, I think one of the easiest ways to do it, even before AI came around, was to just provide little chapter summaries at the beginning or end of each chapter. And that's now really easy to do, especially if you're using a program like Claude 2, which can read a whole lot of data. You can give it an entire chapter and say, here, summarize this chapter, and, and then you're done. You could also provide other study guides. Um, I've done things before where I've written articles essentially on, um, on a particular book and then included that in the book. Um, you can do literary critiques. You can write a biography of the author, which I think is something that has been done pretty frequently. I, I often see books, like I just bought a collection of H.P. Lovecraft short stories, and that one had a biography of him in it. So I think this is a, one that people do often. So you could use AI to help you write that biography. Just make sure you check it for factual information <clears throat> to make sure it's not hallucinating anything. And you can also do the same with historical context, just kind of write about that. And those are the easiest ways to go about it. You could also, again, using something like Claude 2, feed your chapter into it, ask it to give you ideas for different footnotes and things that you can do. And then using a program like Atticus, you can easily add those footnotes into the book itself. And that goes really well. Um, and then translation. So AI is still not great at translating. It does okay, uh, but unless you are translating another language into your own first language, it's going to be hard for you to really understand what that is. Um, something I'm interested in trying, the, um, the series I'm writing right now is called The Fairy Queen, and it's based on an old poem also called The Fairy Queen. I thought about doing basically like a modern translation where it's just translating the kind of old archaic English into modern English. I think that would take a really long time because it's a massive poem, but I think it would be fun a fun thing to try. Um, that could be an idea that you could do to, to bring it as a new translation. It's not necessarily a new translation, but it's a modern text. And in that case, you probably wouldn't even need to label it as public domain. You could own the, all of the rights to that because you're essentially rewriting the entire thing. It's just something to, to keep in mind. If you have a text, like I, for instance, there's one that I want to do that the only version of the public domain, the only version of the text that is public domain is in Old French. And the version that's in English is a recent translation, and so it's copyrighted, and you can't, you know, you can't actually find it in English online anywhere. And so I thought it'd be cool if I could find a, an AI that understands Old French and can translate it that way then I could potentially publish that but other than that there's not much you can do and it's it's a little bit of a difficult one to try and translate it unless you are an expert in a particular set of languages so for most people I recommend going the annotated route and to just create some chapter summaries maybe a biography maybe some historical context maybe a few footnotes here and there you know it doesn't have to be anything crazy uh, although the more value you can add, the better, and the more people are likely to continue to buy the book. Or if you have the private version of Midjourney or, or whatever the equivalent is for other tools, you can create 10 or more images and scatter them throughout your book. 
uh, for for uh, to get that. A couple of things that a, that um, that Amazon does not consider differentiated is explanations of historical con- content. No, no, wait, that's the, sorry, the wrong one. A linked table of contents, improvements to formatting, collections. So if you wanted to ha- collect like the entire works of Jane Austen, uh, that would not count as differentiating enough. Uh, you could have sales rank, price, freely available internet content. Any of those things will not fly. Uh, but generally speaking, AI is original content, even though it is generated in a, you know, there's a lot of debate on whether it's really original. Um, but as far as passing any plagiarism checkers, it will pretty much always do that. So I hope this was a helpful thing for you and hopefully you can go out and find a couple of public domain books and maybe experiment with AI to differentiate them so you can publish them on Amazon. It's actually a great way to get your feet wet into publishing if you've never published a book on Amazon before is to try and go this this route and just see how it goes. So I hope that was useful to you and I'll see you in the next video.